Maybe big data has gotten too big. Whether you're a B2B marketer or a consumer brand, your data needs to be viable, relevant, and accessible so that Starista can help you retain customers, acquire customers, and make it personal. Welcome to the Marketing Stir Podcast by Starista, probably the most entertaining marketing podcast you're going to put in your ear. I'm Vin, the producer here at Starista. The goal of this podcast is to chat with industry leaders and get their take on the current challenges of the market. And we'll have a little fun along the way. In today's episode, Grant Johnson, Chief Marketing Officer at Build Trust, chats about how taking risks can disrupt the market and yield bigger results than settling. Give it a listen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Starista's The Marketing Stir. I am your host, not your co-host today. We'll get to that reason in a moment. Your host, Vincent Petrofessa, the Vice President of B2B Products and Partnerships here at Starista. It is great to be talking with you. Thank you to all our listeners. We never thought this we would have listeners to begin with, and, and yet so many great ones. We really do appreciate it. And thank you so much for coming up to me at trade shows and conferences and just telling me how much you like the podcast. That really is great. That's why we do it. We don't do it for advertising. I talk about Strista for like 12 seconds. That's all. And then we don't talk about it again. Who are we? Starista, we are a marketing technology company. We own our own business to business data, our own business to consumer data. We help companies access that data through email, through display, connected TV. We help companies get new customers. There's the elevator pitch. There's the podcast pitch. Who can't use new customers? That's all, ladies and gentlemen. But it is great to be talking with you, my co-host, my CEO, my commander in chief, as I call him, the San Antonio Slayer. We haven't brought that one back, but here it is. He can't be with us today. He is in a, you know, a board meeting. Oh, does that sound fun? But what does sound fun and is fun is my next guest. I already met this guest. I already chatted with this guest, not in person. You hear me say it on the podcast all the time. I love meeting people in person. Maybe we'll make it happen. Some of the guests I do meet in person, but we're very happy to have him and his knowledge as a marketer. Ladies and gentlemen, the chief marketer, Bill Trust, Grant Johnson. What's going on, Grant? Hey, Vincent. Great to join you here today. It's, uh, it's great to have you. I, you know, I, I should, I was gonna say, I discovered Grant. No, you know, <laughs> but we discovered, uh, you know, Grant, Grant is done, is always out there talking about some of the trends and marketing and the things that he loves. And we, we've seen him on uh, some other podcasts. I was like, we have to get him on. So Grant, talk to us first, Bill Trust. I want, you know, let's, let, let's get it out there for our listeners. What is Bill Trust? Obviously, you're the CMO, but walk me through some of your day to day as well at the company. Yeah, Bill Trust is in the B2B accounts receivable, otherwise known as AR automation and uh, digital payments. And we, very simple value proposition, as you were talking about, um, we help companies get paid faster so they can focus and their staff can focus on more important matters. Who doesn't want to get paid faster? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Exactly. Who doesn't want new customers? And then who doesn't want to get paid faster? Right. Yeah. That's that's the the moral of the story. But so your role within it. So you're you're you know you've been a chief marketing officer uh, for many years for a long time at companies, which is a testament to how good you are. But you're also starting out new at Bill Trust. Talk to us about how it's been the past few months. Talk to us about kind of your role. What have you been helping them uh, do? Yeah, it's uh, uh, I'll get sort of a two, two-part answer. Uh, uh, the, uh, the company uh, responsibility is the chief marketing officer. It's, it's global marketing. It's all the things you would typically see in, you know, in B2B marketing leader. Uh, there's revenue marketing, often called demand gen. There's product marketing. There's uh, what I call strategic communications, uh, internal comm public relations, analyst relations. Uh, there's the MarTech stack, which gets you know bigger every day, trying to sort of orchestrate these different technologies to support 
uh, the, the marketing mission. And of course, there's digital and, and web marketing and you know other things that support those major what I call levers. Um, and the uh, really the first few months I've been at Bill Trust now four months. The first few months is all around uh, setting the agenda, forging uh, strategic working relationships, getting to know my team, uh, embarking on initiives. Uh, putting some points on the board, what we all like to call the low-hanging fruit. One of my uh, sidelines, I wouldn't call it a side hustle, but sidelines is I write a blog at cmomentor.com, and I, I've mentored probably 14 and other CMOs in my career. You know, I'll do one or two at a time. And I wrote about the first and the next 90 days. And, I, you know, a lot of people have written about the first 90 days. But as I've been a CMO a few times, I felt it's really important. Like, you, know, he, you, you survived the first 90, congratulations. But just like sales, what have you done for me lately? What's the next quarter like? So you also have to renew. You may have an annual plan, but each 90 days we're in very dynamic markets. You know, we're facing macroeconomic, you know, headwinds. And so what's working now? What's what's going to work next? So working on those sort of things that I've, uh, I've uh, really been focused on over the last few, uh, first few months. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just, just getting started, but you do have your hands full there. Grant, let's take a step back. We asked this question to all of our guests. How did you get started in marketing? Yeah, I would uh, call it sort of the the actual accidental discovery. Uh, I was a political science major. Do a lot of things with that major, liberal arts, right? <laughs> and uh, I got a, a job out of college. You know, like a lot of folks, you try a few things. And I got this really interesting uh, telecommunications company, and they had this. Uh, uh, a fantastic approach, which was called rotational assignments. And you would, uh, feel like interns might do, but you know, you even though you're working full time, you'd spend a, a couple months in different departments. So, you know, I was in uh, the production area for a while and, and uh, in, in uh, finance area. And then I got into what was called sales and marketing. They were combined in this company. And that's where, you know, uh, the light bulb went on and the lights started flashing. You know, we were doing advertising, we're going to these trade shows, you know, meeting people in the physical world, unlike our virtual existence these days are largely virtual. And I said, hey, this is really uh, captivating and motivating. And I just leaned uh, more towards uh, marketing than sales. I, I did, you know, some sales and that that's really how it started and just got an, ultimately on a career path to to run a marketing organization. Yeah, you know, I think we can call about 75% of our episodes the accidental marketer. There's uh, there's so many people who are like, I, you know, I, just, I was this, I was philosophy and I did this, I was uh, political science. I, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I always tell our listeners, I was one of the rarities who had, I actually, had studied mass media and communications and marketing and uh, a minor in theater. And I guess you can take the podcast and all this other stuff that I do. It's like, wow, you're actually doing everything you've done. You've studied in college. I guess that's the, the rarity, but we're glad you chose this path. Grant, talk to us about you know your experience. You have experience transforming global companies from growth stage to multi hundred million dollar enterprises. Like, you know, before this, you had Burst, Silence, Pega Systems. Talk to us about that, you know, your, your strategies to help organizations grow and succeed. It's a great uh, a question to bridge from the last one, right? Because, of the, <laughs> you, right, you, you've got to figure out, you know, like how to get a, off to a fast, successful start uh, so you can validate what a good hiring decision the CEO, in this case, or CMO, whoever the hiring manager was, made. Uh, but I, I really try to immerse myself as much as I can in the, 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 the business that the company's in. Um, I happen to be in a lot of spaces that are related. I you might call them business process automation or work automation or just automation in general, right? Did, you know, digitally transforming companies to do business more effectively through the combination of people, process, and technology, right? And so as I immerse myself, really need to understand, you know, we all did it, whether it was in college or since then, SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Like, you uh, you know, there's this old adage, like the best way to kill a mediocre product was with, was with great communications because the world will find out and then they'll start telling everybody how bad it is or it's like <laughs> it doesn't compare, right? So 
Uh, you, you really have to play to your strengths. And you could certainly, uh, as a company, evolve over time through m and or in innovation. Uh, so I like to understand uh, first that the capability and then develop uh, actionable strategies and uh, you know what I call a phased approach. Uh, our, our current CEO likes to say, you know, grand vision delivered incrementally. And I love that that phrase because you know if you just you know try to you know raise the temperature ten degrees at once, it's, it's not going to work, right? And so uh, you know set these iterative goals, measure uh, uh, you know and iterate. I, I like to think about the marketing campaigns that we do that we test, we learn. And we iterate and the iterate might be we stop doing it because it's not working. Are we doing it a little differently or we do more of it because it is working well? And uh, the other thing that I think is key that I've found is this uh, cross-functional alignment. A lot of companies don't intend to have silos, but you've really got to bring together sales and marketing first and foremost, but also uh, a marketing product, a sales and marketing customer success. And the more we can get cross-functional uh, alignment orchestration, uh, the better we can serve customers. And uh, I think we can uh, have more opportunity to outgrow our competition because we're working together. The minute you're fighting internally, your backs are to the customer and your competitors taking them. Yeah, I, I think that's great advice. You know, uh, right before we are, are talking now and recording this, I sat on a panel, Grant, about, uh, it was called Coffee and Conversions. It was this company, Focus USA, put on this webinar and they it was great. And it was bridging the gap between marketing and sales. You bring up a, a great point there because it's the age old story, right? Well, it's like, uh, you don't get us enough leads. Well, you're not closing the leads, right? For example, but you know, having a seat at the table, marketing and sales together is so important. I think if you all have the same goals and you're keeping the same score as opposed to separate scores, it's not never going to work. If you're keeping separate scores, that means you're competing against each other. You're not in the same team. So I, I, I love everything you, you said there. So staying on that, Grant, saying, staying on your experience there, those marketing professionals out there, what do you think the most important skills that a person should have as a marketer? Is it creativity? Is it patience? Testing? Talk to us about that process. Yeah, you know, in my view, there's not one skill. I suppose everybody can have their superpower, which is good too. But uh, you really need a, a range of skills. That's one of the reasons. And I, I you know, I have mentored. Uh, I've probably hired hundreds. I've, you know, I've mentored now. I've count. Just the last person uh, who worked for me, who was one of my high potential promoted her to a SVP at my last company in Burst, and she's now a CMO. So this person 14 in my career, almost like one a year. So I've been doing it for 14 years at the CMO level. And I think, first of all, uh, to me, if I, you know, intellectual curiosity, I'm a lifelong learner. I think now's the best time ever. And we'll talk about chat GPT, I'm sure, to be in marketing. But I felt that way when I first started and to me, it's very energizing. Uh, you also have to blend, uh, as, as you've talked about with other guests before, the uh, the uh, critical thinking skills and the creative skills, the analytical uh, uh, skills, as well as the, the brainstorming capability. Because if you just kind of do what your competitors do, you're not you, you know you're not going to stand out. I think uh, you have to be very personable. I you know I really felt COVID was. We all know it changed the world, but I think it changed the the, the dynamics, you know, in in between uh, uh, staff and 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 managers and leaders, which is uh, you know being empathetic, understanding how challenging it is to manage work life balance, and you know take care of folks that need help, and uh, uh, so I think you know I think that's key. Uh, but also one of the things I've learned, I, and again things that are in the CMO Mentor blog, it's just I sort of try to encapsulate learning that happens over not just a single uh, project or company, but over, over multiple years is uh, taking more risk. And you have to just do it in, in, uh, in, in measurable ways. And I, I'm not saying you know, do bet the company type things. If you're a startup, you might have to do that. But, you know, I always say, I don't mind making five and $10,000 bets. I don't want to make a lot of 50, $100,000 bets, right? Whether it's my personal portfolio or the company's money, which I treat like is, you know, is, is my own very responsibly. 
And uh, but you, if you don't take risk, you're again, you're just going to get incremental. You're not going to be able to disrupt the market. And that's something that it takes a sort of an emotional makeup that you can handle failure. I mean, that's the worst thing is to fear failure rather than learn from, uh, you know, when you when you fall short. So I think those would be, uh, you know, the, the that and, and probably today more important than ever, because we've got all the tools to measure and all the digital uh, vehicles is being results oriented. I mean, if it delivers results, great. If it doesn't, you know, do less of it or don't do it at all, or, uh, you know, put the dollars where you're going to get the best return. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you there. I, and then there's two things that you said there, Grant, that I, I want your opinion on. We'll get to AI in a moment. We'll keep the listeners uh, on edge there, because I'm sure a lot of people are interested in hearing about that. But you said you're, you're new yourself there, right? You're a CMO. You also hinted about the remote work the work hybrid environments and hybrid work policies are kind of here to stay. What's the best way do you think like to boost morale in a virtual environment? How can organizations preserve the company culture remotely? And especially you, you're, you're just starting. You're, you, you know, you have a team. Talk to us all about that. Yeah, there's, there's the, there's a lot of, a lot of things that you can do. Um, we we have a cadence at Build Trust. Uh, we have a monthly connect. Some companies only connect uh, quarterly. I think you know frequency, more frequent it is better. We have something we call the Build Trust Blast, and we have a video component. In the last several weeks, each of the executive leadership team uh, have shared you know little three minute highlights. Hey, what's happening in marketing? What's happening in customer success? What's happening in finance and sales? And and uh, so I think, you know, those those are important. It's also to live your values. We we have, uh, like many companies, Build Trust values are on our website. But, you know, anybody can have values on their website. What's more important is we actually recognize, reward individuals who live the values. And it has to be a, a nomination, it has to be reviewed by a committee, uh, and it has to really talk about, you know, the essence of what was done and the impact uh, that it had on our customers, because that's one of our values, right, to deliver a customer uh, success. And uh, I think, you know, you know, I think that's key. And you can, you can see your values in action in meetings. You can see them on the Slack channel. You know, you, we have a shout out like a lot of companies do. And I think you just have to use a myriad of things. Myself personally, especially when you're coming on board as I've tried to you have know, 40 folks in marketing and uh, you know, I have six direct reports. I don't, you know, so there's a lot of people that I don't interact with hardly at all, certainly not, you know, daily or weekly. And so I've been doing, you know, what I call quick connects, 15 minutes. Hey, where do you live? You know, we have this, as you said, this hybrid workplace, we have certainly offices, but where do you live? You know, what's your family situation? How are you, are you getting the tools you need to succeed? Any, so I, I find that they really appreciate my teams, you know, that, cause I, you know, I generally care about people and, and I'd like to see them contribute and, and, and on their own career path, you know, learn and grow and, and, and achieve. And so I think you have to do it, but I will say, and, and this is more so in the last year, you know, as we've sort of navigated COVID, try to find opportunities where you can get together in person. Though there's nothing that replaces, whether as you've talked about, you know, trade shows you go to. I did a product marketing team meeting. You know, I'm going to join the sales, the vertical sales team next week. It happens to be somewhere I can drive to, but I'll fly. You know, and um, those opportunities, our executive teams have been meeting monthly in person. As you know, just part of getting a cadence going. So you, yeah, mostly virtual, find things that work, but also when you can, uh, you know, find opportunities to meet in person, there's, there's no substitute. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I was just telling uh, some of my teammates, I said, look, it's good, it's spring everywhere, right? So the, the, as in the US, the weather is getting better and it's get out there. And me, I, I have the luxury of living in New York City, so it's, it's a place people want to be, and there's a lot of companies here. I'm having a, a you know two meetings tomorrow in person. Someone I met, I was like, you know, a, a call. I'm like, no, let's get a coffee. Let's let's cool. meet up. You know, that's just the, the, the way to do it. I think it's just you can't replace that. So, Grant, you talked about some of the tools that you need to be an effective marketer, and you talked about keeping up with the trends. How do you stay up to date on the latest trends? And you know, and let's talk about AI. What are your thoughts about AI? It's all over the news. People are using it. 
even more. So love your thoughts on it. Yeah, you know, staying up to, to date, it just it goes back to, you know, having intellectual curiosity. I just, I love learning things, right? So, you know, I, I, I've i got, uh, you know, like a lot of folks, I have, you know, different feeds that, you know, come to my my inbox. I, you know, I, I, I have a hundred, probably a hundred CMO peers over the years. I've been part of several CMO peer groups, both in person and especially since COVID virtual and um, the, uh, the, you know, we, we, we have monthly huddles. Uh, the CMO huddles is one group I'm part of and, and we document, you know, the discussion. So like, if you miss one, they go count. So you, it's, it's something to say, Hey, this is interesting. There's Slack channels that say, you know, you know, tools you can use or check this out. And so, you know, that's why I first, like, I can't say it was early, but it was like last summer I was understanding chat GPT. At least it was a few months before it was on national TV. I would have felt like, my God, I really missed that one. You know, it was on CNN and NBC one day in my home and I happened to flip channels. Oh man, this thing is really, and then the website crashed the next day. I tried to go, I tried to go look at it again. So I, you know, I, I do that. Uh, and then my team, you know, I've always been fortunate to be at companies, you know, I've had, yeah, I've been at startups and billion dollar companies. So mostly they're in the, they're in the, you know, a hundred, several hundred million. And so I've got a decent sized staff. And so, you know, they, they share ideas and uh, there's always a few people that are like, love to test things out and, you know, try things out. And that, that helps me, you know, stay up to date. So that's sort of the up to date. Uh, the AI thing, you mentioned Silence, that was a company that was a pioneer next gen, uh, you know, prevention uh, uh, and uh, software. And so I started thinking about it, you know, several years ago. And uh, I, you know, I, I did a blog in the 2000, 2023, I just figured everybody makes predictions. So I made the prediction that 2023 is the year of predictive marketing. And that's what, you know, AI is going to help us do. And, you know, the machine learning is like right now we have hypothesis about, hey, digital will be good here, events will be good there, webinars will help you, you know, you need multiple channels, but if you you can measure, ultimately you get enough data in your uh, data set, you can start predicting outcomes. And, uh, you know, there's this age old thing I've heard now that I've been a CMO a few times is like, well, what's the return? Well, if I go to the board, speaking of board meetings, <laughs> and I say, look, uh, I'd like another million dollars, they're going to say, okay, so what's the guaranteed return? <laughs> you know, I said, well, I can guarantee five million. They're going to get interested. If, if I, I ask for even a hundred thousand and they say, well, what's the return? I don't know. Next question. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not going to work. So I think that's one of the ways you should help marketers prove the value. That's one of the things we've often all struggled with because marketing can be very subjective. But if you can make it quantitative, speak in the language of CFO, make sure that your peers understand what you're attempting to do and the results you're achieving, then, it, you know, it's a more objective conversation. You, you have a chance of uh, succeeding uh, uh, more often. And Grant, you, you talked about in 2023, you talked about predictive marketing, but you think in the next few years, is that, does that stay on track as the most significant marketing trend? or development, or do you have uh, some others in mind? I mean, I think a lot of people talked about the cookie going away, the IP you know, IP solution, uh, you know, big data many years ago, right? Uh, there's a, have been a lot of trends now, chat, GPT, AI, you know, what do you see in the next few years? Yeah, I, I mean, I think generative AI, um, you know, I felt you're right, like the, the, you know, it was data and it was analytics and it was insight for a period of time, big data, all these things is kind of, they, they come and go, they wax and wane. But I think that this one is, uh, is, is a tectonic shift. Uh, in fact, it's, you know, it's so powerful that you're starting to see, uh, I, I won't name the individual, but somebody recently left from one of the major uh, companies. <laughs> Starting with a G, and uh, uh, they, they're really, you know, they're concerned. You know, we, we have to be very responsible. We have to have, you know, some some governance and guide rails that, you know, I'm not worried about taking over, you know, human life, but that it doesn't, you know, go beyond what's what's, you know, what what society thinks is, you know, acceptable. But I think it is extremely powerful. We, you know, we have uh, three. Well, I'll call them experiments. I'm sure many companies have that or more. But we want to do controllable experience uh, with generative AI. Uh, and find out where it can lift productivity and, and speed automation. And uh, just like our overall value proposition to automate the accounts receivable process, 
get you paid past or free up time. I mean, I want that to happen to my marketing staff so they have more creative thinking time. They can work on projects more systematically versus one and done. Uh, and so I think that is going to be a pretty important trend. There may be something that it supplants it, but for the next, you know, as I look out the next year or two, I think there's a lot more that's going to happen there. I've, I've noticed that some of the MarTech stack companies are uh, putting in uh, the uh, in, into the products. One of the most exciting I heard about was, you know, if you're a SDR, BDR, I'm sure a lot of the marketers you talk to are working with these organizations hand in hand. You know, you give them your target list of customers and they tell you exactly what order to call them in, you know, and what to say to them because they've combed the websites, which I think sounds really powerful. Yeah, that that is powerful. I think, you know, I know my, my uh, yeah, uh, BDRs, SDRs would love to hear, you know, love to do that. And, you know, we do get a lot of companies that listen to this podcast and tell us like, you know, all this because there's a question coming up later, our signature question LinkedIn, that really helps their SDRs and BDRs. No, that, that's that's great advice. I, and, you know, I think uh, you're spot on with that. I also think I've been hearing a trend. It's now it's like the retail media. Retail is becoming an explosive category. Every trade show I've been attending lately is just, you know, is retail marketing, retail media. This is everything that, which I guess needs some strengthening uh, to keep boosting the economy here. Grant, you yourself have been at other similar companies, like you said. So obviously there's some competitors out there. How do you separate? How does Build Trust separate itself from its competitors? Yeah, for us, there's a couple of things that we do. It's the, you know, we're a, we're a company that covers everything from the initial order through getting paid the cash, ordered cash, we call it. Um, and uh, we make getting paid radically simpler. And I think it's really the elegance and simplicity and integration of our suite of solutions all around uh, AR automation and payments. Uh, that's that's maybe you might call this sort of the breadth and depth and technology difference. But the, the, the other part that, you know, as I've gotten to start to know some of our customers and learning about, you know, why companies choose Build Trust, stay with Build Trust, some of them have been with us 10, 20 years, is that we have a culture cross-functionally that focus on customer success, on, on positive customer outcomes. At the end of the day, if, you, if a company uh, buys your product or service and they don't adopt it and don't realize the business benefit, the business value they envisioned, you're, they're not going to stay with you. They're certainly not going to grow their, their, their investment with you. And so we've, we've never lost sight of that from the founder to the, 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 the new CEO, my boss, uh, uh, Sunil, that we we never lose sight of the customers why we exist. As you might recall from the most famous quote of uh, Peter Drucker, purpose of business is to get and keep customers. Getting's not easy, but keeping is not easy either. So if you keep in mind both of those, uh, you, you can grow and succeed. And I think that's what makes us different is how we serve uh, customers. Yeah. And who... Who would you say is your ideal customer? Who are you mostly working with, who you'd like to work with? Yeah, we we actually are a horizontal solution, but we found that if companies have lots of customers themselves, think about it. If you've got five customers and you know you get good payment terms, if you've got a lot of our customers have thousands of customers, I'll just give you a few of the verticals that we happen to really have a lot of depth in. So, you know, equipment suppliers, the distributors. Um, you know, building supply or industrial supply, medical, lots, lots to do with medical, uh, you know, uh, transportation, manufacturing. Uh, again, if you, you have a lot of customers and, uh, and you want to make sure that, you, you know, because we, we not only simplify the payment process and, you know, the, uh, that we also help our customers have good experiences. Like if, if I'm one of your customers and you harass me about payment, you don't make it easy to go to a payment portal and see the status of you know payments, uh, then that's not good. So we want to improve our customers' customer experience. And that's just another benefit of doing business with Build Trust. Now, yeah, that those industries definitely uh, definitely make sense. Let's talk about that question I was going for earlier. This is a staple question. This is our marketing stir LinkedIn question. People ask me mostly about this question when they see me in person. You, you know, you're a CMO of a company. 
you're probably getting solicited all the time, Grant. What's a message that resonates with you? And what's a message that you just hate, don't respond to? And you can see why SDRs, BDRs love this question, because it's like, oh, that's how I should be reaching out to people. Yeah, I, uh, it may it may change over time, but I'll tell you that the, the standard ones that you're, the BDRs and SDRs, and, uh, the ADRs, whatever the, the different companies call them, is, uh, you know, I know you're busy. This will only take a few minutes, and that's a quick delete. Okay, if you if you can't get a little more original than than yeah. the four thousand messages I've already deleted, I can yeah. delete a message in less than one second. Um, and it, it never takes a few minutes, Grant. It no, never no. takes a few minutes. And or if you write paragraphs and you say it's only take a few <laughs> minutes, like nah, there's some there's some cognitive dissonance disconnect here. Uh, you know, one that broke through recently uh, was, uh, and I and I said, look, I only answer one in a thousand. So he, is uh, somebody had uh, done some research, which is always a good idea, about uh, my our company, my background, and and you know had a provocative statement about the uh, the benefit and had a case study of somebody that I respected had received benefit. A lot of times, I'll you know you know I'll get a message and it says you know. Some we're in B two B. Some B two C company. We've done all this great stuff. I don't care. I mean, I've been in B two C myself. I'm in B two B now, so you know you have to be relevant, distinct, and succinct. Exactly. So it's being direct to the point, succinct. The ones you hate are the the general ones. Uh, yeah, I we we hear a lot of different. That's kind of the theme, right? Come up yeah, with something and, that's going to help my business come up with something that's personalized like i always say and this is a message to the pr firms out there that hit up us to get their clients on the marketing stir for which we only select very very few we go after our own guests but if you are listening pr agents here's a way to get people on the marketing stir tell people you listen to the podcast tell me that you like the podcast and then go into your spiel Make sure all the fonts are the same. I don't want this to be blanketed. And then we will see if we get your uh, client. But just things like that. Even when I'm being solicited for something as well uh, on LinkedIn where someone reaches out to me, you know, get my name right. All right. Not the last name. I get it. I have a long last name. But Vincent, Vince, Vin, come on. That's <laughs> come on. Grant Johnson, you should get Grant right. Come on. So, Grant, let's get to know you personally here what do you like to do for fun what are your hobbies what are some of your favorite things uh, out in sunny california well look i like spending time when i'm not working of course with my family uh you know i like uh, cooking i like uh, traveling uh i have a, a, a daughter who's asked me if we uh, now that she's in advanced placement french and i lived in france and can we go to paris so i guess i'm gonna be working on that for this summer and nice. hopefully that works out uh, but I think I, I shared with you before, and and uh, and your and your your CEO and I share a passion for tennis. I uh, mm -hmm. I play a couple times a week. I'm very fortunate. I've been to the national championships three years in a row at my nice. level, and um, you know, you 32 people from around the U.S. get you know based on how you know your playing winning percentage, tournament, so forth. And I just I like to compete. It's it's fun. It's you know it gets as you as you as you've done it a few times, and you know work within your own. Uh, division that you, you find there's a lot of camaraderie where nobody's getting paid you know we're hoping that you know we get home injury free that kind of thing <laughs> and uh but i just find it's a great combination of you know mental focus physical exercise and fun yeah aj is uh gonna kick himself for missing this one because i i remember your love and passion of tennis he uh, has sustained a few injuries, and we talk about the injuries a lot on oh, the, really? uh, the podcast. But uh, yeah, I, I he he loves it. There's a whole team out there in San Antonio. They go to nationals. They do this, but you know that sounds like you're doing uh, really well at it. So that's awesome. So Grant, a closing thought uh, you want to leave to our listeners: a parting thought about your experience marketing anything. Yeah, and I've been asked this many times. Uh, you know, what's the best advice I can give to a early stage or you know sometimes even you know middle mid mid stage career person is to to be intentional. And uh, I contribute my success. I mapped it out. It may not have happened exactly 
at the time in the order of I'd like to, you know, to run a marketing organization. I've done it multiple times, but I've had some people say, like, I'm sort of not sure how I got here like you. I mean, you're, you're utilizing Vince and all your talents that you're, you'll have more that you'll utilize over time. But I, I really think that it, you, if you set a goal and you have concrete steps to get there and you're intentional about it, you're certainly going to increase your odds uh, of arriving uh, at the de ultimate destination, whatever that may be for you as an individual. That's, that's great advice. Be intentional. I love that. I think that's a first for uh, the, the podcast here. Grant, mention again the, I know you're doing some mentorship with CMOs. Mention your blog one more time for our listeners. It's uh, cmomentor.com. cmomentor.com. Nice and uh, very easy and simple. Thanks, Grant, for spending some time with us. All the work you're doing there at Build Trust and mentoring other CMOs. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the Chief Marketing Officer of Build Trust, Grant Johnson. I'm Vincent Petrofessa. AJ Gupta is not on the tennis court. He is in the boardroom. He'd prefer to be on the tennis court. This has been another episode of The Marketing Stir. Thank you all so much for listening, and we'll talk soon. Thanks for listening to The Marketing Stir podcast by Starista. Please like, rate, and subscribe. If you're interested in being a guest on the podcast, please email us at themarketingstir at starista.com. And thanks for listening.